dear students today we shall be talking about the productivity and particularly we shall be focusing on the um, productivity in aquatic ecosystem we shall be talking about the measures of productivity we shall be talking about the types of productivity and we shall be talking about the factors influencing the productivity before proceeding it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel by productivity is fundamentally the study of food relations within the communities and in this lecture we are more concerned about the aquatic communities so such studies which involve the investigation of the flow of energy and cycling of nutrients within the community that we categorize as the product productivity so the productivity involves the investigation of the flow of energy and cycling of nutrients within the community so all the energy for the life is derived from the sun in the form of solar energy and green plants that we call them as the photosynthetic plants or we also call them as the transducers they trap it and convert it into chemical energy so this stored up energy is transferred to different trophic levels or plants and animals and when these plants and animals die the energy content passes to to the decomposers or decay organisms for further processing and to be converted back into the um, to, to the organic form now when we talk about the productivity the fundamental steps in the operation in a self sustained ecosystem it includes it is the reception of solar energy that is it is the reception of the solar energy from the sun and then it is the production of the organic matter by producers and consumption of the organic matter by consumers and then decomposition of organic matter um, into an organic form by decomposers and then transformation of the organic and inorganic compounds in, into suitable compounds for nutrition of the producers again so this cycle operates this is nutrient cycling and as well as the energy transfer so when we study investigate all these very things actually we are studying the productivity in a self sustained ecosystem when we talk about a self sustained ecosystem all these steps will be contained including both living and non living matter whether we are talking about the light water inorganic nutrients which perform the photosynthesis which or which help in the photosynthesis while living matter include producers consumers and decomposers so when we talk about the productivity it is actually a combination it is actually a combination process which includes both living and non living matter non living matter is various abiotic factors such as light water inorganic nutrients whereas um, which help in the photosynthesis whereas the living matter include producers consumers and decomposers so when we talk about the primary producers they include uh, chlorophyll bearing plants they include bacteria capable of manufacturing energy contained organic molecules through utilization of solar energy and these are the primary producers they can be different in different ecosystems for example when we talk about the grassland ecosystem the grass is the uh, grasses are the primary producers when we talk, talk about the pond biome the algae are the primary producers when we talk about the oceans phytoplanktons are the primary producers so those very organisms chlor chlorophyll bearing plants or bacteria which are capable of um, manufacturing energy contained organic molecules through utilization of the solar uh, radiation and many a times we uh, categorize them as the plants they can be kelps they can be diatoms they can be dinoflagellates and many a times some of the lithotropes they can they are also called as primary producers but they utilize different components for example uh, sulfur um, decomposing bacteria iron decomposing bacteria they can they can utilize different uh, you can say matter as well so secondary producers they include zooplankton 
which actually feed on primary organisms while consumers include all type of organisms in the community which are which are incapable of synthesizing energy contained organic molecules and include herbivores carnivores as well as predators so those very organisms which are not capable of um, undergoing the production are uh, undergoing the synthesis but they are dependent on the producers they are dependent on the producers for the energy we call them um, we call them as the secondary producers we call them as the because um, the secondary producers are themselves the food for the other organisms as well they can be herbivores they can be carnivores they can be predators as well so many times the students uh, get confused whether why we are we are talking uh, about the secondary producers now here in the secondary producers are eaten by the um, consumers are tertiary producers are lastly they can be called as consumers because they convert the they also convert or transfer the energy help in the transfer of the energy that is why we call them as the secondary producers as well and many times we call them as the primary consumers secondary consumer tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers and we use the term primary producers for, for the plants only so thirdly we do have the decomposers the decomposers include heterotrophic bacteria and fungi which help in reducing organic matter in the elemental state in the form of organic nutrients for the use of producers so heterotrophic bacteria and fungi which help in the reduction of organic substances in the elemental state so that they, they, they can be again utilized by the plants or the producers we call them as the decomposers so all these organisms depend on each other including plants and animals for the release of carbon dioxide for the release of carbon dioxide and thus of the form of food chain when uh, when these this these very several food chains interconnect they form a food web so in the form of the food chain and the food web they are interconnected and all the successive levels of the measurement is represented by the links of the food chain and we call them as a trophic level for example here in this very picture we say that this is the first trophic level which uh, which uh, consists of the producers the second level uh, primary uh, second um, uh, trophic level they consist of the primary consumers third trophic level secondary consumers th um, the uh, fourth trophic level tertiary consumers and the fifth trophic level that is the quaternary consumers and mostly uh, it is sad um, that um, very um, there cannot be more than five trophic levels because no such energy is left to be transferred to the sixth trophic level so because of the 10 percent law that every, um, every at every step only 10 percent uh, is um, 10 percent of the energy is uh, transferred so first trophic level includes producers second trophic level includes primary consumers and third trophic level includes secondary consumers and fourth trophic level include the decomposers and many time fifth quarter uh, trophic level include the decomposers so it depends upon the uh, ecosystem we are studying so productivity when we talk about the productivity all these levels that is the trophic levels they start with producers and generally there are three measures of the productivity the first measure of productivity is standing crop S second is rate of the removal and third is the rate of the production so these are the these are the uh, measures of the productivity that how we are going to measure the productivity so by the standing crop by the rate of removal and by the rate of production so when we talk about the standing crop is this series standing crop is the total biomass of the organism present in an area per unit time so biomass of the organism present in an area per unit time and may be expressed in the form of biomass and in the form of energy it can be measured in the form of biomass or it can be expressed in the form of energy so the standing crop represents the quantity of organisms and they can be determined in pond in terms of biomass that is dry oblique weight wet weight um, it can be measured 
on dry weight basis or wet weight basis or on the basis of the volume or on the basis of the number or on the basis of the ash free dry weight so there are different um, measures different standards by which we can measure the starting graph so the actual rate of the growth is determined by the initial number of individuals plus addition that is natality that can be birth minus mortality the per unit time per unit space and it can be computed with the help of the formula dn our dt is equal to uh, rn first of all that how we are going to calculate the actual rate of growth actual rate of growth that is the initial number of the individuals present are and and we add the number of the births and we minus the mort mortality so that we can have the actual rate of the growth and that is measured as dn our dt is equal to rn where n is equal to number of individuals t is the time r is the rate of the natural increase of the population or which i um, i told you that difference between the natality and mortality at a given time and many a times n over t is equal to rn what is that this gives the average rate of change of the number per unit time average rate of the um, number per unit time the second one is the rate of removal rate of removal of organisms from ecosystem through various reasons like harvesting poisoning predation diseases it generally refers to yield or harvest from ecosystem per unit time per unit area so it means that the organisms from the ecosystem through various reasons they are removed and what is the rate of their removal whether they are removed by harvesting they are removed by poisoning they are removed by predation they are removed by diseases and we measure it in terms of yield or harvest from the ecosystem per unit time per unit area so both these very factors are important because what is the uh, area of the removal and at what time both are necessary because at another time this can, the, the um, data can be different emigration or the loss of the nutrients in the sediment can also be the factor so emigration and the loss of the nutrients in the sediment can also be the factors for the rate of the removal and thirdly rate of production this very concept is related with the rate of organic matter synthesized in this space per unit time so in the earlier we discussed about the rate of the removal here we are concerned with the rate of production how much organic matter is synthesized in space per unit time and it involves the cycle of the growth we call it as the growth cycle or cycle of reproduction death decomposition of organic matter or in other words we we are mainly concerned with the turnover of the nutrient energy it is it differs from animal to animal animal as well as it may vary in different situations different seasons even the times of the day and in different environment so rate of the production it varies minutely keeping in view the situation the season time of the day or the environment we are studying so rate of the production can vary and uh, we have three main types of the productivities the rate of a biomass production or amount of the food energy produced or obtained or stored by a particular trophic level per unit area in a unit time is called productivity so when we talk about the productivity it is actually the production of biomass or amount of the food energy that is produced or obtained or stored by a particular trophic level per unit area per unit time so when we are studying about the production of the food 
in a particular area per unit time we are actually studying the productivity it can also be defined as energy accumulated in plants by the photosynthesis the unit of productivity is gram per square meter per year or it can be kilo calories per meter square per year and according to odom there are three productivities three types of the productivities that is primary productivity secondary productivity and community productivity so this was all about the productivity next time we shall be dealing with the primary productivity the factors influencing the primary productivity and then we shall be discussing secondary and community productivity thank you thank you very much this was all for today next time we shall be dealing with the primary productivity